here to welcome hot dogs, hot dog fans, and hot dog supporters to our third annual Frankfurt Hot Dog Hall of Fame. Throughout today's important ceremony, we have the honor of acknowledging some truly amazing hot dogs. As a lifelong hot dog myself, these ceremonies have become one of my favorite traditions. Like so many of you here today, I connect personally with many of the alumni and honorees that we celebrate. After all, Dr. Beersley casted my arm when I was in first grade, Mr. Milholland was my principal, and Kyle Cook played at my prom, just to give a few examples. The opportunity to celebrate the success of each of these honorees today and in previous celebrations helps to not only remember the greatness of, that these hot dogs brought to FHS, but also gives inspiration to our current students. It's uncommon to see our students looking over the Hall of Fame plaques, talking about the accomplishments of the people that we have recognized today, and they're given the courage to dream their own great accomplishments as these hot dogs have helped to forge that path. Inspiring a new generation of hot dogs is an amazing gift, and I thank each of you for being a part of that celebration. <clears throat> to begin our ceremony, it's my pleasure to introduce Assistant Superintendent, Mr. Joel McKinney. Cindy, good afternoon everyone. On behalf of Superintendent Don Luis and School Board President Karen Sutton and the entire Board of Tr School Trustees for the Community Schools of Frankfurt, I too want to welcome you to the 2020 Frankfurt High School Alumni Hall of Fame program, also known as the Hot Dog Hall of Fame. As Cindy said, I'm Joel McKinney, Assistant Superintendent, and I want to congratulate all of our new inductees as well as their family members who are here today to represent and support them. We're glad you're here, congratulations. It's now my privilege to introduce our Master of Ceremonies for this afternoon. Returning for his second year as our MC is Mr. Tyler Stock. Tyler is a 2005 graduate of Frankfurt High School where he was a varsity letter winner in baseball, basketball, and football. He went on to attend Butler University where he graduated with a degree in broadcasting. He and his wife, Annie, have three children, Cecilia, Felicity, and Noah. Please join me in welcoming to the podium, Tyler Stock. Good afternoon. Welcome to the induction ceremony for the third class of the Frankfurt High School Alumni Hall of Fame. Before we get started, I want to take a moment to thank our sponsors, those include the Farmers Bank, the City of Frankfurt, the Clinton County Chamber of Commerce, and the Frankfurt Education Foundation, as well as many individual families. On this stage with me, as the previous speakers have said, are an elite group of hot dogs who have achieved extraordinary lifetime accomplishments. The Hall of Fame Class of 2020 is comprised of individuals who have positively impacted our community, our state, our country, and our world, and I mean that literally. From physicians to nuclear engineers to a Hall of Fame coach and teacher, these hot dogs here are the best of the best. So thank you for being here today on behalf of the board of directors, the school, and everyone here. You make us all proud to be alumni. In a few moments, we are going to hear from our Hall of Fame inductees and judging by their bios in the program, there's a lot we can learn from their experience. So good news. Richard Solis TV class is recording this event and we'll have it posted to YouTube in the near future so you can watch it over and over again and share with everyone you know. I know that where I've moved in southern Indiana, there's probably not hardly a day that goes by that I don't mention Frankfurt in some way. And I think a lot of us share that mentality. Mr. Clawson, I'm glad to see you back this year. Don't worry, I've shortened up my introduction since last year since I stole half the speech. Also, I'm not sure why I'm the MC. You're the professional actor, but what do I know? It's good to be back here in Frankfurt, as always, um, especially in this beautiful auditorium. Uh, it brings back a lot of memories from being missed, and plays, and a variety of different things. And I'm sure you can all agree that this venue has stood the test of time. It looks no different today than it did 10, 20, 30, even 40 years ago. 
And if anybody's traveled around to other communities and other towns, you'll know that small towns like this aren't supposed to have venues and facilities that are world class, like this auditorium, for example. Rural Midwest towns are known to be cornfields, factories, and diners full of locals reminiscing about past basketball sectionals. But Frankfurt is different. Here we have built a community with a culture that takes pride in its own. We work to create opportunities to develop the next generation, and we teach people not to sell for mediocrity. My dad once told me a story about when my grandfather went to the Washington Street Barbershop to get a haircut from Ethel Rule. And Ethel, this was the time they were building Case Arena, and he said, you know what, we're going to get the sectional from Lafayette to come to Frankfurt. And my grandpa looked at him and said, Ethel, they played that game in a tent before they moved from Lafayette to Frankfurt. <laughs> but this just demonstrated the mindset that people had that we're going to aim high. We're going to go after the biggest feat. You know, everybody knew that Lafayette would never bring the semi over here within Mackey Arena and everything. But it doesn't mean we weren't going to chase and be ambitious to go after them. Les Brown, a motivational speaker, once said, I'd rather you aim high and miss than aim low and hit. So whether we realize it or not, the people of Frankfurt have given us lots of examples of aiming high. For example, we didn't just build a gym, we built a world-class 5,500-seat arena and brought Hollywood in to produce a movie. We didn't just build an auditorium, we built a thousand seat professional theater and created a theater class that has performed first class productions for decades. We didn't just host Junior Miss, we ran the best Junior Miss program in the country and have the awards to show it. We didn't just build an airport, we built one big enough to bring in skydiving and corporate jets. We didn't just hire old teachers, we hired coaches that, and teachers that went on to be Hall of Fame caliber and then believed in and inspired students with big dreams. Like when Kyle Cook stood on the stage and talked about what Miss Priest did for him, and now he's a multi platinum Grammy Award winning artist. Then there's Wesley Manor, Red Barn, the public library, all first class facilities that any community would die to have. And this list is just the tip of the iceberg. So, whatever project, event, or task, if it was started, then it was done 110%. Because of the culture, it's not a coincidence that year after year our Hall of Fame classes are filled with truly remarkable individuals. Whether we realize it or not, we were all benefactors of a community that invested in us and were intentional about not settling for less than our best. This is why when guys like Perry Lewis left Frankfurt, he believed he could go work for NASA. And he did. And this is why when a guy like Phil DeBoy have the confidence to go get a PhD in chemical engineering from Stanford. So I want to end by giving everyone a challenge. Luke chapter 18 verse 48 says, to whom much is given, much is expected. Because we've all been blessed to have a community that gave us so much, it's only right that we pay it forward. So no matter where you live today, what are you doing to invest in your community and to provide an environment that empowers people to chase their dreams no matter how high they might have aimed. With that, I want to start the induction ceremony to uh, get these individuals up here and to hear just how high they've aimed. <coughs> so it is with great honor that we introduce the first member of our Hall of Fame class of 2020. Our first inductee is Steve Adams. He is a graduate of the class of 1961. For some reason, he decided to teach at Lebanon. Maybe he can explain that. I'm not really going to understand why. But. <laughs> Luckily, that was short-lived, and Steve dedicated his life to music. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Steve Adams. I refuse to apologize for teaching at Lebanon. I will say that uh, one of my co-teachers in those years was Rick Mount's mother-in-law. And she told me that the city council gathered to rename Lebanon as Mountville. Fortunately, that was turned out. I am a graduate 
of this beautiful, not this beautiful high school, a beautiful high school to me in Frankfurt. The last thing that a 76-year-old expects is to receive a phone call inviting him back to high school. That's what happened when Don Stock called, and I appreciate it so much, it's an honor to be here. We're talking about shooting for our dreams, and I have a few thoughts to share with you. Each of us, no matter our background or age, was born with a song that we call life. And this song has lots and lots of verses, many of which in my life were written here at Frankfurt High. So it's an honor to be home. With the school's administration, faculty, and staff, and with Frankfurt's wonderful citizens and so many friends. Through the years, many of you have helped me to know it's when we join our works to a deep abiding faith that our youthful dreams, once just imagined possibilities, can be turned into heaven-blessed realities. Frankfurt High that I attended in 1961 was downtown at Old Stoney. Some of you may recall that in those days, Frankfurt's High School was comprised of two properties on either side of Walnut Avenue that were connected under the street by a tunnel. Fortunately, it was one of the places where every day I'd get to spend a few moments with a good-looking junior, a sweet chick named Janet Hudson. Unfortunately, the tunnel was always guarded by faculty members. But Jen and I sneaked a few hugs when they weren't looking. I've been involved in church music all my life, growing up in a minister's home and serving as pianist and organist in the churches that my father, Reverend Nathan Adams, pastored, one of which was located, by the way, on the opposite corner from this school, just caught the front door, you go over there. Dad pastored that church back in the 60s. For a long time, though, my fondest dream, which was composing music, turned into a seeming impossibility and just an avocation. So shortly after high school, I said goodbye to what seemed like unattainable concert plans and publishing pursuits and enrolled in philosophy as an undergrad in English literature studies for a master's degree at Indiana University. But heaven had other ideas. As someone has said, the Lord flipped the switch. After self-publishing a song and accompanying several major artists in a variety of concert venues on weekends while teaching school in the Lebanon school district as an English teacher during the week, heartwarming records in a major publishing company in Nashville where Jan and I have lived for more than 40 years now, took an interest in my songwriting ability and began sharing our music with national and international audiences. In the meantime, Jan and I have begun making music together as a lifetime partner. Two high school sweethearts were married in 1964 in Frankfurt by my own dad in the very church facilities within view of this building. It was a marriage made in heaven. We recently celebrated our 55th wedding anniversary. A talented and loving helpmate understood my pull towards music ministry and welcomed the ever new lyrics of our lives that the Lord was writing. The journey from Frank High to this moment then has been a blessed one. Amazing Grace is not only America's favorite hymn, it's a very real verse in our personal life song. The pathway from elementary, junior high, and high school classrooms and dreams has not been one of our own making. The Lord has led us to this moment. All we did was to follow his dreams for us. So we can say to all we meet, regardless of age or background, follow your dream. Follow your dream. Heaven has placed a special song in your heart when you breathe your first breath. And it's his song, full of unexpected and truly amazing verses that he wants to sing in you and through you. May God bless each and every one of you as you welcome brand new verses of his song and dreams into your life. Thank you for the privilege of spending this unbelievable and unforgettable day with you. And a special appreciation to the Honor Society ambassadors and to Mr. Don Stock and his wonderful team.
There's just one thing left for me to say. Go hot dogs. <laughs>
rewarding experience, and may all of you have a wonderful rest of your day together. <laughs> it was run by an agency other than the Defense Department, although they borrowed heavily from defense uh, uh, people. And uh, it was run by an agency that's still very busy running wars, uh, mostly. But uh, the, uh, I, I was involved in, in several, but it did happen that just as I arrived, Anyway, this is just personal things. Um, but uh, the school here uh, did mean a lot to me. I uh, uh, was growing up, I had a sis one sister who was nine years older than I, a very good student. So all the way through grade school, the teachers who taught her pointed out that I wasn't nearly as bright as she was, and, uh, and a very poor student. So I set out that if they wanted to see dumb, I was going to show them dumb. And I thought I was the only person on the globe that knew that when you had a, 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 a
simple quiz or exam. It was just uh, two choice. And it, it was just as difficult to miss every single question as it was to get every question right. So I kept that up for a long time. I created some problems at home with my mother uh, and several. That are, I realized what happened. They figured me out pretty quickly and allowed me to do that, or otherwise I would have never been promoted and I'd never been in high school. So when I shop, stopped by that afternoon, he had a, 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 a show that he had prepared three slides to be, that I could watch, uh, be greatly, greatly uh, increased, enlarged. And it fascinated me so much that I then came by on my own whenever he would let me to see more of those. And he even convinced Boyce Bush along. me that I love mathematics, and I still do. It was so such a good, uh, a good job of that. But it has it did mean a lot. And I often think of some of those teachers and what they did to me and for me, and uh, something. That also, by the way, to uh, John and Grace uh, Miller for nominating me for this. Thank you. Our next inductee is Mr. Perry Lewis. Perry graduated in 2002, and to this point is the youngest member of our Hall of Fame. After graduating from Embry-Riddle with an aerospace engineering degree, he went to work for NASA. Here to break down Tom Hanks' role in Apollo 13 <laughs> is Mr. Perry Lewis. But seriously, please welcome Perry Lewis. <laughs> Probably no one you know, or anyone that will graduate within a decade of you. <laughs> so 
So if relatable, I don't think I have that. I think you can tell the, the nervousness or the worry in me. So he um, reminded me of the great speech that Kyle Cook had given a couple years ago. In fact, Don reminded me over and over and over again of that speech. So for my speech, as a Grammy-nominated multi-platinum artist and lead guitarist, <laughs> Truly though, I did struggle putting into words exactly what this, what this means to me. As I look at the other inductees and, and those on the wall, I'm in awe of their contribution and success. I recognize that, that I have a, uh, a ways to go and a lot remaining in my path. Um, and I'll make it forever my mission to continuously be deserving of this honor. The best part about today is that I have the opportunity to thank those that mean the most to me. First and foremost, my mom. I can't say enough in these few minutes of how much she means to me, the appreciation I have for her, and all that she has done for me and my sisters. She has the biggest heart of anyone I know. She's been through hardship, and she continues to give 100% of everything she has. And thank you to Ed Niehaus for being our biggest supporter. Also, thank you to the Bell family. I think I saw them out there. Thank you for making me a part of your family. Being in your presence is being in the presence of home. And thank you to Ryan especially for being a friend, a sounding board, a role model, a guiding light, and most importantly, a brother. And to my girlfriend Juliet for her love and patience. And finally, to Mike Clawson for playing such a pivotal part in my life growing up. I don't think I'd be standing here today if it wasn't for your inability to accept anything less than the pursuit of perfection. I love you all and thank you. The name going on this wall is mine. However, it is also my father's, my grandfather's, and my great-grandfather's. And this is for them and because of them. 10 years ago, I stood on the ferry stage and spoke to high school students about their futures. My fear was their lack of exposure to what was really available to them out there in the real world. It's important for them to know that a career, can, a career can exist from any interest. I conveyed that to each and every one of them, that there exists a path from, it, from where they were sitting that day to anything they want to do or become. It won't be easy, it will likely be met with obstacles, but there is indeed a path that coming from Frankfurt wasn't a limiting factor, however, an essential part. You only have to look around this room to recognize that. I've been given a lot of thought about the speech I gave then and this honor today. And what it truly means, but more importantly, what it can do. It's not about how we got here, but how it helped others get here. Therefore, my challenge, my charge, to everyone today is to use this platform to become an ambassador to the future of Frankfurt's youth, to show students of Frankfurt what is possible, to be their champion. I was told those chances would be recorded and that it may be shown in classrooms later. So for students here today, thank you. And those watching, listen closely. The pictures on that wall are not to showcase achievements, but to be a resource to assist you with yours. I'd like to make a promise to you on behalf of myself and the rest of the Hall of Fame. We are here to help, serve, mentor, and guide you in any way we can. That is our duty. Thank you.
Please welcome our next inductee, Dr. David. still hear voices echoing the following. Prepare for success. Finish strong and don't quit running until you cross the finish line. Play by the rules, act like a gentleman, and don't leave anything out of the course. Never give up. And then I think the mantra that always be able to look back and say that you gave your best. One of my mentors at the University of North Carolina used to say that we celebrate our successes, but we learn from our failures. And along the way, I definitely have had, uh, I've had both. Um, I learned early on that I was not a prodigy in the classroom, and I certainly was not what you would call a gifted athlete, but in order to participate and in order to succeed, I had to prepare, I had to study, I had to work hard, and a lot of those lessons started with my days here in Frankfurt. Um, sometimes those lessons came Next inductee is Mr. James Rogers. He graduated in 1952 and was then commissioned to the Army for two years. During his career with Hooks Drug Stores and Historic Indianapolis, Inc., he has been a key figure in the creation and restoration of many iconic Indianapolis buildings and events. 
Please welcome our next inductee, Mr. James Rogers. Our next inductee is a familiar face to, to many of us. Our next inductee is Miss or Coach Jonelle Smith. She was a graduate of 1966. After college, she came back to Frankfurt and poured her heart and soul into the community, especially through the tennis program. From the high school program to summer tennis camps, nearly every child and student has been impacted positively for the past 40 years by Coach Smith. 
already a member of the Tennis Hall of Fame, please welcome to the podium Coach Jonell Smith. to have lived in Frankfurt 
and to have worked for the Frankfurt schools and for the Frankfurt parks. During my 35 years of teaching and coaching, I enjoyed the support of 14, or not 14, four superintendents, three principals, four athletic directors, four assistant coaches, dozens and dozens of teaching colleagues, countless summer tennis instructors, and my friends, and local tennis enthusiasts, and of course, all of the players, old and young. The support from the community, whether for teaching or for coaching, was incredible. I thank my family for all of their love and encouragement, and I thank all of the families of all the students and players that I work with over the years and those who trusted me with their children. The summer tennis program and the high school team benefited from many local businesses and individuals who sponsored teams, provided trophies, prizes, and other awards, who gave funding for various tournaments, who provided their, for the annual tennis picnic, and so much more. And I would be remiss if I did not mention the support of the Frankfurt Times and WILO. Uh, a lot of communities don't get that for free. Um, without all of this support, none of the rest would have been possible. When my family would visit me at Purdue, my father would always be the last to say goodbye, and it was always with this admonition. Buckle down and keep your nose to the grindstone. I think in today's terms, we would say, work hard and never give up. I tried to use that philosophy in both the classroom and on the tennis court. I feel so blessed to have worked with thousands of children in the classroom and on the tennis courts. They say that it takes a village to raise a child, and I am most grateful for the village that supported my teaching in the classroom and on the tennis court and my coaching. I am proud to say that I am a hot dog through and through and that my village is Frankfurt. Thank you very much.
we drive or walk by it every day on our way to school or Walmart. But that gym is history, and it's fairly impressive history. It's always been amongst the biggest high school gyms in the country, so I have to think in the world. I saw two NBA teams play there when I was a kid. The Harlem Globetrotters played there, and Hollywood joined with the best college and NBA players to shoot um, a very popular movie in that gym. How many high school gyms anywhere could claim all of that? So that gym is a big piece of local history. But I wonder how many of you, at least under the age of 50, know about the Frankfurt Gymnasium that preceded that awesomely historic dome. That gym was downtown because the high school was downtown. Sadly, tragically, it was demolished to build a parking lot. But back in the day, that old gym was every bit as impressive, if not more, than that one over there. In 1923, the citizens of Frankfurt wanted a gymnasium for their basketball team that could also serve as a community center. These citizens saw no reason to spare expense when building a gym for the citizens of the community. That gym held 3,000 people in a time when many high school gymnasiums were so-called cracker boxes that held just a few hundred. The first year that gym opened was also the very first year for their new, very young basketball coach. His name was Everett Case, and that dome over there is named for him. He was a very competitive leaf on our tree. But back in 1923, when they were deciding what to name that new great gym, it must have been a very big deal. They must have had hundreds of suggestions. After all, there were alumni, athletes, founding fathers, big shots, pioneers, bankers, politicians, and titans of industry they could have named it after. I mean, 1923 was only a few years after the First World War. There must have been scores of veterans from Frankfurt that gym could have been named after. But almost unanimously, the community decided to name that gym Howard Hall not for a founding father or soldier or athlete or businessman or even a man. She was simply the high school principal, and her name was Catherine Howard. Catherine Howard was born in Covington, Indiana in 1857. She enrolled at State Teachers College in Terre Haute at the age of 16. Later, she took graduate classes at Chicago University and Columbia University. After years of teaching in the lower grades, in 1904, she became an instructor of English at the high school and soon advanced to department head. She was so talented and so popular in that position that she was twice asked to take the job of principal. She turned it down both times, saying she'd rather stay in the classroom. In 1918, she was asked for the third time, and to quote the Frankfurt Morning Times, in view of the great public demand, she accepted the job. Catherine Howard served as principal until 1931, when she retired at the age of 74 after 45 years with the school system. She died in 1944 at the age of 87. And that's local history. A small woman in wiring glasses who was beloved by an entire town. A very inspirational leaf on our tree. On the occasion of the dedication of Howard Hall, the Frankfurt newspaper said this, Miss Howard, by virtue of her personality, character, and spirit of liberalism, added to a certain sternness, is one woman in a million. Indeed, few women can boast of her rare combination of personal traits and virtues. I'm pleased to accept this honor on her behalf. Thank you.
to the stage our student ambassadors, who are members of the National Honor Society here at Frankfurt High School. These students have been paired up with our Hall of Fame inductees and are providing them with a first class experience today. They will be escorting them out to the, uh, out to the hallway out there where we will be uh, unveiling the newest plaques for our Hall of Fame. So uh, with us, the students today are uh, Odalise Campos Vasquez, Daisy Santos, Mandy Myers, Bailey Wessel, Yahir Ruiz Roman, Eris Beth Rosales, and our ushers are Carly Santos and Flor Ramos. So, so before we wrap up, I ask, would like to ask everybody in the audience to stay seated until the Hall of Fame members are escorted out um, so they can be out there first. Um, then we will ask everybody to please stay. We have a uh, catered reception out here uh, in the mezzanine as well. So um, again, congratulations to our class of the Alumni Hall of Fame, and we look forward to seeing everybody out there at the unveiling and the reception. So congratulations again. <laughs>